Has the thought ever crossed your mind, what happens to the children that get separated from their families at the border? Leaving your country for a better life is more complex than it sounds. Starting from scratch in an unknown land, learning a new language, not fitting in. It's already scary coming to a place you've never been before, but risking your life knowing that there's a possibility you won't make it is terrifying. I was born in New Jersey, but Colombian blood runs through my family. For generations, I've heard stories about people coming to America to seek a better life, new opportunities, safety, a home. My Hispanic heritage motivates me, and as the next generation, I want to use my voice to advocate and educate. I want to inform people on the harsh realities of immigration and demonstrate that the system needs to change. In some cases, families and children immigrate by crossing the US-Mexico border illegally. Children, most of the time, don't have a choice. They are following those that they trust and confide in, hoping to reach a better life, or leave alone due to life or death situations in their country. According to a UNICEF article in 2020, nearly 20% 20 of over 1,300 interviewees identified violence, including death threats, extortion, gang recruitment, and domestic violence as the main reasons behind leaving their communities. So what's going on today? Let me try to give you a better understanding of why families leave their countries and the risks that can occur when children get apprehended at the border. When children get to the other side of the desert, some of them attempt to cross the border. Not only is there fear of those who are trying to detain them from a governmental perspective, but also there are un some unscrupulous people who have possibly been paid to bring them over as well. According to Washington-based organization, Human Rights, they first registered 6,356 mi violent migrant attacks. These attacks included rape, kidnap, and other assaults against migrants. The government regularly violates the 72-hour limit. These facilities are not meant or designed to keep children and families. And to be blunt, the conditions are rather dangerous to humans. Does anything about spending 72 hours in a cage with freezing temperatures and terrible conditions sound pleasing to you? Let's take a look at some personal experiences from people who were at the detention centers. Marciela describes that she was only allowed to bathe once a day. Camila mentions that she was allowed to bathe only after being transferred into a family detention center. And keep in mind, this was after five days that she was held in custody. Detention centers are described to be have limited access to, a hot, to hot meals and change of clothing. Children are being piled together, kept in these centers, forced to sleep on hard floors. Detention centers don't have beds to sleep on, and not everyone is provided a mat. Detention centers are ripping apart families and children. In some cases, families are permitted to stay with their children but men and teenagers often get separated. Detention centers and questioning can be dehumanizing to children. And families that leave their country, leaving these traumatic situations and having to come to these centers and continuing the same story of trauma, it just doesn't help the case. We need to make a change and acknowledge humanity to become change agents. There's no easy reverse to the trauma that these centers fuel, but by speaking up, we can make a difference. Why are we being held in jail-like detention centers if what we seek is safety and an opportunity? I resonate with Hispanic immigration due to my background, but this is a worldwide issue. Wherever you're from, you deserve a, a chance to a better life, whether it be seeking safety 
or looking toward a brighter future. Simply by speaking up on the topic, we can, be, we can make immigration become normalized and therefore more people will be educated. And with education, there can be change. Thank you.